please tell us about the advantages of using local norms as well as national norms. So in the in the field of gifted education for a very long time, um, we have used national norms. Quick definition of what national norms are is we look at kids across the country when we're norming an assessment. And the assessment is based on the norms of the country. And so we use national norms, which means we compare students by age to students across the nation. And there's definitely advantages to doing that, and there's the time and a place to use national norms. What we are encouraging people to start doing, though, is looking at local norms. Uh, and, and the reason that we're looking at local norms is because in all of my years of uh, administering gifted assessment, I've been in very different school districts, but I have never been in a district or a school that is representative of the demographics of the nation. It just doesn't really exist. You are comparing the students in your either district or building, and you're comparing those students to each other. And by using local norms, you can determine who is so far from the mean that they are in need of specialized services. And that's really what we're doing in gifted education, looking at the average student and determining who needs different services. So by using local norms, you may not be identifying students at the 97th, 98th, 99th percentile. You may not have students in your school or in your district that are in that top 3%. But you may have kids that are in your school that are very different from the mean that need specialized services that are qualifying at a 90th percentile. So the purpose of using local norms is to identify the kids that really need something different than what the traditional curriculum or pacing is in that school. Uh, the challenges with using local norms, though, uh, and, and you have to be really out in front of this. And in our book, um, we do have letters that you can send home to parents. Um, communication is the key with using local norms because they're not portable, meaning if you ide are identified in one school as the 90th percentile and you move to another school and their criteria is the 97, 98, 99, you are not the you are not then identified for gifted services for that school. So another thing I want to add to that is that um, our state criteria varies throughout the country. The state's criteria and the mandates for identification, and the criteria upon which students um, are identified are based on that state's criteria. So when Kim was talking about using local norms, and specifically building norms, because every building within the district is going to be somewhat different. We do need to, and, and then in that regard, we do need to test the whole grade level in order to see who's going to fall furthest from the norm, as Kim was saying. But the other thing is the state criteria might be, for example, in Arizona, it's 97% or above on any one of the areas, verbal, quantitative, or nonverbal of a ability test. I know in another state, it could be based on achievement. In another state, it could be based on a combination of ability and achievement. In another state, it could throw in a leadership and creativity aspect. So my point here is that the state has their own criteria on which they are going to designate its, the identification of giftedness. However, it doesn't mean that you can't serve these other students. So I really, lose sight of that official criteria for identification, because here what we're trying to do is we're trying to identify students we have been missing from our programs. So if we are looking at identifying using building norms, it, like Kim said, it could be a 90%, a 92, a 95, whatever is that percentage at that school who needs something different from the rest of the students. Now, you might say, Oh, but wait a minute, I won't get any state funding for those students that are not at a 97% or above. Face it, this funding for gifted education is minuscule. There's no federal mandate for gifted. There's no federal funding. So therefore, it, re it re really comes down to what each state is going to provide. 
and even further, what how each district is going to support the gifted services. So I believe that it's more important to identify students that need something differently than identify them for a special label as designated by the state, depending on that criteria that that state um, requires.